Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Guys, it seems like it's been a minute since I um, been over here doing a recipe with you, even though I have had the uh, weekly meal. But guys, what? let me tell you what I will be uh, sharing with you this morning. It's a uh, subscriber request, and it was for a old-fashioned pot roast. The way we used to fix them a long time ago. Simp simple, but absolutely delicious. Okay, guys, um, without any other further talking, let me uh, take you... I mean, uh, tell you what we'll be, I'll be using, and then uh, I'm going to go off and wash my roast and uh, and come back and uh, show you how I brine it up and get ready to put it in the oven. Okay, guys, what the type of roast I'm going to be using uh, this morning is one like they normally always use back in the day, a chuck roast, a beef chuck roast. And this one that I'm doing this morning, guys, is probably about three. No, I don't think it's quite three pounds because it was. Uh, it's, I think it's probably about two and a half pounds of better. Okay, like I said, I'm gonna wash when I'm gonna take that out the pack and walk, rinse it up, wash it up real good. And when I come back on, I'm gonna show you how to put the seasoning on it. Uh, guys, a long time ago, mostly what they used was simple salt, black pepper some fresh garlic and uh, onions and uh, some Worcestershire sauce, black pepper and salt. Okay, so that's basically what I'm going to be using this morning, guys. Uh, I got some salt and black pepper right there and I got some of the Lari's uh, seasoning salt and you can use any type of all-purpose seasoning that you uh, seasoning salt that you uh, normally use. It don't make that much of a difference. But uh, this is one my mom used to use a lot. And guys, I got a can of uh, beef broth. And then I got a pack of, uh, excuse me, low sodium beef uh, seasoning on the top of it. Just add some extra to it. And then guys, I got some, um, how we say this here? Worcestershire sauce? Worcestershire? Worcestershire sauce? Unless it's one of my uh, subscriber told me one time that just call it W sauce. But uh, we used to say it like Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce. And uh, then guys, I got some flour over there. You can use self rising or all purpose. You know I'm a fan of the self rising flour. That's what I'm going to be flouring the roast with. When I get ready to uh, go over to take it over. After I get through seasoning it and take it over to the oven and uh, brown it and then get ready, I mean take it over to the stove and brown it and get ready to put it in the oven. And okay guys, over there to the uh, right I have some uh, uh, Yukon, Yukon gold potatoes. I have about, that's probably about five or six of those chopped up in a uh, I'll show you the size of it, guys, when I get ready to put them in on the, around the roast. And then I got some baby carrots. But let's back up a minute, guys. You can use whatever potato that you like, whatever your preference is with the potatoes. The russet potatoes, uh, just any type of white potatoes. But uh, red potatoes or either one. I uh, But this, I done fell in love with these types of potatoes. And then I got some... Uh, Got some of the baby carrots over there. And you can use baby carrots, whole carrots, or whatever. It really don't matter. And then I also have some uh, uh, granulated onion powder and granulate, granulated garlic powder. And then I have two large onions. Guys, all this stuff I'll be talking to you as I put it on. And I'll show you how, it, you know, it goes. I mean, how I'll be putting it on mine. But you can... Do, you, you know, you can use whatever season you would like to use. Uh, that's going to be up to you. But Because the, the roast back then was cooked very simple. Like I told you, they used just black pepper and salt and fresh garlic. And, you know, and sometimes the uh, seasoning salt and the uh, uh, Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce. And got, uh, somewhere over there I got some garlic cloves. 
That's one thing my mama used to always put in her roast. Uh, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. I have about, I don't know how many pieces I have over there because I'm just going to take it and put it inside the roast. But guys, I got my uh, skillet on over on the stove with some, uh, you could put some cooking oil in it or uh, you could put some olive oil in it because once we get this roast seasoned and the flour put on it, we're going to brown it and then I'm going to put it in the, uh, I'm going to show you, I'll be showing you how to do all of this. And then we're going to put it in the uh, baking dish, whatever you bake your roast in, but make sure it's big enough to um, hold the um, your gravy and your potatoes at it. I was, I was going to use my mama's uh, Dutch oven, cast iron Dutch oven that she normally used, but for some reason or another, I just didn't want to, I just didn't want to get that out. I have it. I look at it occasionally, but uh, I just, I just wasn't, I, my, my spirit wasn't telling me to get that out this morning, so I said I was just going to, you know, just do it. You know, when you lose a loved one, somebody you love dearly, certain things just put you in the, in the, uh, put you in the, in a mood that make you cry just like you, they just left you. So, when you see that, when you have that kind of spirit on you, just kind of, you know, walk away from that memory till everything come back down. It's all right. But uh, anyway, uh, I bake my roast. I uh, put my uh, uh, roast in an oven, a 325 degree oven. I used to do it on 300, but I do 325 degrees. And for this size roast, I'm going to uh, ache it for anywhere from two and a half to three hours. I would be testing it and and uh, seeing, you know, how how close to done it is or how much longer I have to take. I mean, it needs, and I will tell you exactly how long I did this here, almost three pound uh, beef roast uh, when I get finished. So, okay, okay, guys, let me step off and get my roast cleaned up. And then I'm going to come back and show you just how simple it is to season it. And we're going to brown it up and get ready to put it in the oven to bake. Okay, guys, I'll be right back. Okay, we're on. Okay, guys, uh, I have my roast washed up real good. And, guys, you know, I told you. Let me get one of these guys over here. I have to get one of these. I told you in the past, I wash all my meats. I've had uh, uh, subscribers to email me and ask me, do I wash off my meat? Or they see me wash my meat and want to know about that. I say, I don't know what's the deal with it. I've been doing it for ever since I've been cooking uh, over 50 something years and I've washed it. I always have washed it and I will continue to wash chicken, beef, or whatever it is. I, I don't think I, I could eat none. I see that they take out the pack and they wash it. Okay guys, so let me get the uh, seasoning, this uh, uh, gross. Now what I'm going to do is take some slits and just put them in there like some cuts and just stick this. I don't know if I want to do it before I season it so it can stay in there good. And just stick your uh, garlic pieces in there. Try to get every little big area it is with this garlic these garlic pieces just stick it down in the meat and you talk about flavor it's gonna give it to it now you ain't got to stick as many as I probably would stick cuz I I make sure and guys this roast even though it was expensive it ain't worth nothing I usually they usually have this you know, fat where you can kind of trim this but it was so messy like till I'm not gonna bother about trimming I'll just when it cook up if it have it uh, um, fat on it. I'm just going to skim it off. And I'm just going to let it cook like it is. Put those two pieces of garlic in there. And then I'm going to go in on this side and lightly sprinkle some salt. Now you don't want to over salt your food, especially when you're using seasoned salt. And I'm a person that don't use much salt. But any other seasoning and stuff, I let it have it. Like the garlic, uh, granulated garlic, pepper, 
an onion. You put all the seasoning that you're going to put up on there. I do, except the uh, stuff coming out. You just shake it, it's coming out. It's coming out slow. There you go. Okay. Maybe need to puff it a little bit. Okay, and I just kind of rub it in. I didn't put any oil on top of this here simply because you see all that fat up there? All that's going to render up and you don't want all that up in your food. But this other that's in there is going to act as flavor. And you do the same thing on the other side, guys. Sprinkle your little salt. That season is so. Black pepper. Was your black pepper, your granulated garlic. I bring this garlic up. Ah. Yeah, that was the garlic and the onion. I got oh, I got one onion over there, kind of browning first off. And I normally put a garlic in there, but since I was gonna be doing this, I didn't do it, so I can uh, watch it. Then I'm just going to rub it in, massage it in rather. Sometimes I, uh, when I, I may let my roast marinate overnight and all that, that kind of stuff. But guys, a lot of that stuff ain't even necessary. This meat is really tender and uh, the beef, I mean the way I cook it, that slow cooking it like that, like I do it. It um have the flavor in it just perfect. And then how can I do that, guys? And not to remember this too. I'm gonna sprinkle a little in my gravy and all that stuff when I get ready to do it. This Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce is also uh, got a lot of salt. I put at least maybe about a, a tablespoon, probably on the, between the sides. Because like I said, I'm going to sprinkle some more on there. Then after I do that, guys, that's when I go on in and I put my flour on it. That flour really thick on the real good. I always take you some flour out because once you are... Uh, do your flouring with it, you're not going to be able to use this flour anymore, except for the gravy. When I get ready to make gravy, over on in, it's not going to flour both sides. And that's it, guys. Okay, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to take my onion out that, uh, skillet and go over to the stove and show you how I brown it and uh then we'll get ready to put it in the oven I'll show you what I do to put it in the oven be right back okay guys we're back I'm gonna get ready to brown the roast just a second and that's what it looks like okay guys it's easy and simple to do this I got my Stove probably on a medium high heat, and you, can you see the uh, the oil? I had the onions in this here browning. Show them the onions over there. Gary. I had just one onion. That's one onion over there, but you know I had two onions in. I'll show you what I'm gonna do with the second one when I get to it, guys. Okay, and I'm just gonna take and put the uh, flour roast over here in this uh, skillet. Let it brown. I'm gonna save that flour there, guys, because I'm gonna be once I get this roast uh, brown. 
I'm going to be putting that flour in there probably a little bit more and just kind of brown that a little bit and make a, some uh, liquid which is going to turn the gravy to uh, put over the uh, roast. Can I step behind you? Watch my hand. Okay, guys, and I got a piece of foil here. Did you show them the pan with the onions in it, too? Yes, I did. Okay, I did one onion. I brown it up like I told you in this skillet, and uh, that's flavor in the bottom left of this roast. Just saute that one onion, and uh, once I get this brown, mm -hmm. and then in that. Uh, on both sides and then a little bit on the side, but I don't really be going so much on the side. And you don't have to do it much, guys. Just get it brown. All the other stuff is going to take about five minutes. I'll show you when I get over there, because when I show you the first side, what it needs to look like, I'm going to go off and finish browning it and then have it over there in that dish when I come back and show you what I do in the skillet to make this uh this gravy that I'm gonna put over it. Then that's when I will cover it and put it in the oven at 325 degrees for approximately two and a half hours. This roast is so small, I'm kind of really disappointed in it, but it has some dense, um, some kind of, you know, thick pieces in it, just little thick pieces in it. Um, normally, guys, I used to get all my beef roasts and stuff like that from Winn-Dixie. But when Dixon left from here in this hill city um, years ago, I liked their meat. It was not with that, it was, you know, they was very reasonably priced, and then the flavor of their beef. Whatever beef that they used, you know, like, now they got this Angus, this Angus, how you pronounce it, David? Angus? Angus. Angus beef now. And I don't know if I'm that crazy about it. I don't know that's, who you. That's a good quality beef. Uh, well, you know, I don't. They they say a lot of things that ain't true. I don't go with all that they say. Now they now the chuck roasts have been okay, but some of the other beef, the jury's still out on that stuff. I hear. I know you. I know people say that, but mm -mm. I said they need to go back and find them cows they used to uh, have. I don't know who they was or what they was. But they show tasted a lot better than this and stuff they got out here now. No difference in the cows. Thanks. Just the way they feed them. That's what they feed them. A long time ago, they didn't feed all this piece of case stuff. They get it cows and chickens and everything else. Feed and stuff that had them. Had them look like they grown within a few months. Well, they must be feeding them caviar Especially or something like that. Uh, From birth to uh, about 32 days after uh, chicken has to put in a chicken house, they don't know they don't know way to the market. And they are feeding them constantly around the clock. That's about the same it was in the uh, when you live in the country. I'm just gonna turn this on over I have enough oil up in there. I'll be particular with this because I'm how I normally when I'm cooking this normal one like this at the house. I always do let it <laughs> mess around and let it burn. It don't be burnt, but the uh, bread is whatever. But I got it turned down. Put that over there. For me. I turn. I got it turned down low, especially to show you guys. See how I'm turning it, guys. I let it brown, and it could have let it brown a little bit more, and I probably turned it back over for a few seconds. But when I come back, this is going to be brown. I just want to show you how I brown it, and then when I come back, I'll be showing you how to do the next step to uh, get the uh, gravy that I'm going to put over it. Okay, guys, I'll be right back.
Okay, guys, I got the roast brown me enough. That's all it takes for it. And uh, remember I told you to say, I was going to say that uh, flour that I put it in. And I got a little, it's still some oil in that uh, skillet. So I'm going ahead on and put this here same flour that I put on the top of it over here. It's probably going to be about a, let me see. Because if you need some more, you can put it in there. Let me see if this going to be enough. I don't want to get it too, too much flour and here and get it too thick, too thick. Because uh, you have to put your butter. You want your liquids to stay kind of loose to put your um, uh, I'm going to put the rest of it in. The only reason I'm doing that is just keep them wasting. I did have enough in there, which was probably a third of a cup, you know, from a third of, to a half a cup. I was trying to get it while I didn't have to put any more oil up in here to grind it. And okay, guys, when I get my flour over in it. Just kind of stir it and get it, spread it out so it can cook off a little. I'll cook the rawness off that flour, but uh, which not, which is not a long process. Just go ahead on and take some of those. Uh, excuse me. Same seasoning that you put on the roast and sprinkle it off in this. Uh, which is gonna be your gravy. This light got me where I can't see. So I'm putting it in there. Tuck. Mm -hmm. Yes, so far. Yep. yep. <laughs> that ain't gonna bother nothing. Ain't gonna do nothing but make it super duper good. I see a couple of them garlics and stuff popped out of there. some black pepper up in there. Turn the stove down a little bit. Guys, I'm going to sprinkle a little of this lard over in there. I think I like using self rising flour if you don't Get enough of that up in there, enough seasoning up in there. You won't have that taste that that flour give it. Can you see over in the skillet, guys? Yeah? I can. And you see how brown I got this here? But like I told you, don't take that flour long to cook off at all when you got your skillet just hot. A uh, couple of minutes at the most. You're not definitely going to have that flour taste. And then, guys, I got this here. Um, that uh, pack of a uh, 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 sodium free bouillon cube. I got it in this mixture. Now I'm fixing to go ahead on and pour it over here. And this, I got two cups of water in here. If I have to use more, I will. But see, I got this here beef broth that I'm gonna put in there. If you're not gonna put that beef broth in there, you're probably gonna need a little, you know, use a little bit more water. And like I said, some of them garlic cloves fell out of that roast while I was brining it. That's all right. That's fine. Go ahead on and uh, sprinkle some of this here Worcestershire sauce up in it. I'm gonna call that a tablespoon of my hand. And this is my uh, beef broth. And all I'm gonna do is just let it come back to a um, come up to a boil, and then I'm gonna pour it over the roast and put it in the oven. And I'm gonna let that roast cook for maybe about uh, an hour before it's done. I'm gonna come back and show you when I put the potatoes over there. And guys, if if I get the if the roast is cooking fast or uh, you know, it's, it's tender than what I put it like this here. If I misjudge the time and I look and see the roast don't need that long, that much more cooking, sometimes I just part bar the uh, 
carrots especially and uh, the potatoes and stick them on in there but I usually let the potatoes when I put them back over there I'll be looking for them to cook at least an hour better around the roast guys it's very very simple the way you do this roast but it's going to be unbelievable delicious and you do all this in seasoning and, and the salt to your taste I can't tell you what your taste is going to be how you want it with the salt but I'm just showing you how to get the flavor up there in this roast. And I'm just simply, all I'm going to do with this is just let it come to a boil. I don't want it to be thick at all because it's going to thicken as it cooks. Now I know a lot of I know a lot of people which I have too use that uh uh Lipton onion soup mix, but the reason I, I basically got got it in here with the uh, uh oh I tell you what I was gonna try one of my uh salt free seasoning in there will you step out there and get that for me the one with the uh onions it's kind of got those dried onions in it roasted onions. Now you can put, I put normally, I can put, sometimes I put celery in it if I have some celery. I'm doing a beef roast and I have some celery that I want to get rid of. But now one thing I do not put in my roast, but if you like it, you can. I don't put bell pepper in it, guys. I'm going to tell you with us, some of your older cooks and people that was taught by your older cooks, I don't even know if they had bell pepper back then. I'm just going to put one of my soft free uh, seasoning up here. And this is some uh, uh, onions and herbs. But like I told you, they, they use a lot of onions and herbs and stuff back in the days. Not so much your... Uh, well, I don't know. Like I say, I don't know if all them seasoning and salt was out. Because when they came out... And see, you can put as much of this you, you want up there, really. And I about done got used to it, it, how much it tastes with this. I love this stuff for the flavor. And when you have the flavor right, it's not going to take much salt, the sodium and stuff in it. I was telling them something. What was I saying there? Oh, yeah, we didn't have, I don't remember so much bell pepper back then. They might have had it, but, and my mama might just didn't use it, but then she, when we left the country and everything, she started using the bell pepper. She started losing a lot of things that, she wasn't, she didn't normally uh, use in the first thing. She said, ah, oh, this stuff ain't right. Mm -mm. Especially when it came to them seasoning stuff. She would tell me, she said, baby, don't you. That stuff got too much salt in it. She really just couldn't hardly take the seasoning salt. But so they use mostly seasoned with the black pepper, salt, onions, and garlic, and different little herbs and stuff like that. A lot of the herbs and stuff now, that we get in the store, they used to go right. They used to grow wild back in the country. They know how to go in the field. Certain time of year, they would just go out there, and my brothers and we would go up with them, and they would just pick all the kind, the kind of stuff that they used to cook with, and would be absolutely delicious. They used to have some. Gary, you remember that stuff they used to call? Was it rafe? Rafe? I, you know, you didn't think about this while they were living, huh? It was sort of, they would mix it in the collards. They would cook it with collards and stuff like that. I don't know if it was Rafe. I don't, I don't remember. Because, you know, I was showing you in the store something looked like it. Mm -hmm. That I told you that grass like that. I said, well, it used to go out there. It should grow along this little fence line at our house. I said, she used to go out there and get that. And I said, it had like a peppery taste. I, I think it was in a salad we had. When we had that salad, I said, this is the same stuff Mother used to go out there uh, at our fence line. You know, we had, it wasn't even the modern fences either. And they would get that stuff, and she would tell Boochie to go out there and get it, and she would use it to season stuff with, put it in collards, and gave it like a peppery taste. Either it was watercress, they used to call it something. Oh, no, I can't, 
I used to think of it sometimes. Okay, guys, like I said, I'm going to let this, I just, it done came to the little bowl. And I'm going to simply pour it over the roast. Let you see how much liquid be in here. I'm pouring kind of backwards. Can't see exactly. Oh, that smells good. <laughs> Ooh. I got them seeds on point in that roast. And uh, like I said, I got that one onion on there, but when I get ready to put those potatoes and carrots around it, I'm going to put the uh, other onion on chop that onion I'm not gonna even saute it you know I got some little extra garlic I'm gonna put in here now see back in the days you wouldn't have to use this much garlic garlic back then wasn't nothing to play with I think a lot of people scared of it now especially the ones um that I uh, grew up when I grew up with grew up with them. You didn't you didn't have to use much garlic. But uh it's just as simple as that. Can I have my big silver spoon over there please? And I'm just gonna take some of this gravy and just put it on the top just to be doing something. I'll show it to you guys when I I take it out to put the uh, put the uh, carrots and potatoes around it. I'll show you what it looked like. Because when you put it in the oven, just forget about it. It's 325. Forget it. I, I set my timer. I got a little bit more of this here. Uh, I'll wait till I, no, I'm going to pour it on in there. Got a little bit more of this here liquid left in this can. I don't want to waste because it's definitely going to take a can. You could put it back. You could put it in. Sometime I save it and put it in with my uh, potatoes. But see how you, you see this dish that I'm cooking it in, guys? It's big enough where it's going to accommodate those potatoes and stuff. And that's it, guys. I'm gonna wrap it with the silk foil, put it in the oven, and I'll see you back when I I see you guys back when I get ready to uh, put my potatoes around it. Be right back. Okay, guys, I'm getting ready to, uh, it's only been an hour and a half, but this roast is smelling so good, I think I need to check it and go ahead and put these potatoes around it, because this is such an itty bitty little roast, it's more likely, woo, more likely they're going to take it as long as it was, woo, yeah. See how we got to Oh yeah, boy, boy. That's all right, it's looking good there. <laughs> okay, guys. Yeah, so Pass me a knife from that truck. Let me test it. Test the tenderness of it. I'll check the tenderness of it for you, want me to sample it? I'm not fixing to cut this rush right now. I got to put the potatoes and stuff around it. Keep going, mm -hmm. there's a knife. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah, look at that. It's ready. So all I'm getting ready to do, my guy, is put these potatoes around it. And wow, my house smells absolutely divine. I'm not going to turn the roast over. I'm going to let it stay just, you let it stay just like it is. But then go in and put these, uh, and this will be a good time to, uh, Give me a little spoon uh, to test. Let, I'm gonna let's test uh, to test the uh, the uh, gravy here. And see what any more salt in it at this time? Cause I got my potato seasoned up too. Here you go. Will you test the spoon? 
sure. Okay, I'm holding the sink so it won't drip. It's hot now. <laughs> Right. Okay, I got this all this other stuff. I got it. Ain't got no salt. I just want. Right, that up. Don't use that no more. Oh. Okay, guys. Let me tell you how I'm gonna do this. Like I told you, I put a little onion powder and a little of this of this on here. I like to have much flavor here because this probably be my. I'll be eating off of this until I drop some bread in that corner. I'm gonna be eating the vegetables and stuff. Ain't no telling when it ain't gonna take Tuck long to take this off. I'm real stop. Cause he brought up, Tuck brought up to me uh, this week here about something that um, my mom used to cook all the time. We absolutely love it. And I'm not gonna call the name of it, but I'm gonna prepare it for you guys. I'm gonna share it. And I told him, I said, oh, how's the surprised. Surprised he had mentioned that. I said, you know, I had almost forgot about that. I hope I remember how to uh, make it. So the onion's still in there. Oh, okay. Thank you. Right my hand, but I can't see. Something on like right ways, man. Chrome. <laughs> Is it going now? Yeah. Okay, guys. I'm being careful because I drain the water off of these potatoes and I don't want none of these potatoes to touch this pie rick and bust it. Okay, these are the potatoes and I told you I put that seasoning on that. On these potatoes. I'm going to put them over here. That was that second onion I just got to put on there. And I usually put my uh, carrots first. But you know when you're doing stuff for the camera you kind of because it takes them a little longer to cook. But it's, they're going to be just fine the way I like them. Because uh, I'm going to let this cook maybe about a, another hour. And I'm going I'm to cover it back up. Because I cook it on low. If I was cooking it on two, uh, 350, that would be a different thing. Guys, like I was telling you, you put just as much uh, carrots and potatoes around there that the dish you have it in it can hold. It ain't no certain amount. The way I eat this, these vegetables like this, because like I said, it's all I got to have. I ain't got to even have the meat with it, just that gravy in it. And, uh, whew. Let me start getting home while I talk about this. And that's just a meal within itself. Got everything out of your duck. Guys, it's all good. Now, like I said, I'm going to cover it back up. And I might or might not take the cover off that day. And this ain't going to cook no more in probably about an hour. And then potatoes and stuff and carrots and stuff will be good and done because I'm going to leave the uh, uh, foil over it. And, uh, get them down in that liquid. You see how the liquid stayed on there? The gravy stayed on there, guys, and how it made up. I knew it wasn't going because I, I was going to wait and just let it stay two hours because the size roast that I get, normally I let it cook two hours before I put the potatoes around there and let the take potatoes stay around there an hour. And if like I told you if I mess around and get to they get too done and I know it's about ready, I'll just uh go ahead on the part ball my uh uh but especially the carrots. Okay guys, I'm gonna put it back in the oven for another hour and when I come back this roast will be completed and I'll end this video guys. Be right back. 
Okay guys, and we're back. And this is the finished product of your of this southern old fashioned pot roast, beef pot roast. And guys, I'll taste some of that, that gravy. I just can't wait. It is absolutely delicious. And uh I want to say thanks to the subscriber that asked me to show how to fix the um old fashioned southern style pot roast. Can't beat it. These other ones is good, don't get me wrong. But when you get this one, you just every every so often you're gonna be having a taste for this. So guys, what I'm gonna tell you, um, I cooked the roast a couple of hours, and well, you know, I, I had cooked the hour and a half with the uh, vegetables around it, so maybe two and a half hours, whatever. Uh, not, I just say two and a half hours, and um, right now it just came out the oven, and I'm gonna just let it cool for maybe about five minutes and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to serve you guys a piece. It's going to be too hot to do it but I'm going to do it anyway because you always just kind of let your food cool down and the juices uh, redistribute and sell it itself inside your meats and stuff like that before you uh, uh, cut it. But since this is uh, YouTube time I'm going to go ahead on and let you guys see the tenderness of the roast and the vegetables. So I'm going to, I'm going to end the video now but I'm going to come back I'm going to let it sit for maybe about 10 minutes before I try to get over there and handle it because my look, I've been burnt myself. So guys, uh, what I want to tell you, I appreciate you guys to the highest for supporting my channel. And I also thank the ones that has been going over uh, supporting and subscribing to my little, to my baby daughter's uh, channel. And uh, hopefully she's out, she's out of town this year weekend. Hopefully she'll have us some good footage to look at when she come back. I'm looking forward to it. And the name of her channel is Brit Simone. B-R-I-T-T-S-Y-M-O-N-E. That's Brit Simone. And uh, I probably put it in the uh, comments when I think of it because you know my mind kind of goes. But uh, support her channel, uh, guys. I, I really appreciate the ones that... I already went over and had start supporting her and, and everything and she's excited about her channel and I know she's going to bring us some good food footage if she uh, continues to stay with it and um share my video out guys and share my video out got with your family friends to Facebook and all that that kind of stuff and uh leave me a comment as and leave me a comment guys as to how often do you guys fix the uh um uh, old fashioned pot roast. You know so many ways you can fix a pot roast and like I say some of them good but nothing take the place of a southern old fashioned pot roast. The flavor is is superb simply because you don't put in that you don't put a whole lot of stuff in there that's going to mess the, the the goodness of the beef. The flavor of the beef. So uh okay guys I'm just going to step out for a minute and I'll say bye when I come back and serve you guys a piece. So let me let it cool and I'll be right back, guys. You got the thing back on? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, guys. Uh, I decided I'm going to go ahead and cut it. It's still hot, but uh, we got to run to Lowe's. And I want him to go ahead on and get this video up today. So um, I'm just going to go ahead on and cut it. It's still real hot. But first of all, let me just take some of these vegetables out and show y'all what the vegetables look like. And you see how, you guys notice how I put them in. But they should be done. And if they're not, all you got to do is put them back in the oven. Oh yeah, this is exactly like I like my carrots and potatoes. Because I like to mash my potatoes up. <laughs> oh, and they fine. And I like for my carrot to be just like a ooh, waste of some of that stuff down. You missed that? You didn't tell me that? Okay, I'm just, I want to get some of this up and just kind of show you this first. Right, that go that that little extra minute gonna help this here meat cool off some more. It's really hot, but um, uh, starting out to 
for sure. But I said, no, nah, I'm cooking this for my guys. And I'm going to go ahead on and cut it so it don't really make no difference. Somebody get in and I hear everything start trying to show up. Y'all see how that roast beef feels? That pot roast. What it look like, Tuck? Yeah, it looks blended. You want to do a mukbang? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to mukbang that. <laughs> Guys, it's Tim. And it's not falling apart. Some people be saying falling apart. I like my meat just done and not falling apart and all that stuff, but tender, tender, tender. And I, unless and I'm just um, gotten real off, and I've been cooking it like this for many, many years, so I know about how long it takes to cook and all of that good stuff. So guys, that is it. That's your southern, your delicious southern old-fashioned pot roast all day, guys. And we getting ready to uh, leave out of here and let this cook cool off some and come back and eat some more. And I'm pretty sure Tuck going to take care of this before we leave. And guys, I might put it in a weekly meal. I'm not sure because, like I said, I'll be ready to leave. And uh, guys, uh, you know, uh, like I always told you, use your common sense. Thanks positive. And they may love you guys. Bye. See you in the next video. Bye, you guys.